I've been really fascinated about making your own flower seed cards so that this card or gift that you send keeps giving and because I have harvested so many flower seeds I thought why not make them into paper cards that's when I started researching on YouTube of how to make your own paper from unwanted paper with the flower seed cards to plant them you just need to soak them in water once it becomes or mushy then pop them into a pot that's already two-thirds full of soil and once you have popped your flower seed card in there just cover it with some more soil and water for it to start growing it probably will take a couple of weeks depending on the type of seeds and I have used African daisies for my first experiment I'm still waiting for them to sprout it's been a week and a half and nothing's happened just yet so I'm looking forward to see the results To start making the pulp, you will need a blender, as well as shredded pieces of papers. Here I have used gift wrapping paper as well as my unwanted art portfolio. Because uh, for this specific colour, I decided that I want it to be green-ish for the Christmas theme. It felt really soft and nice. So soft, <laughs> for this particular batch, I have used a whole jug full of the shredded paper as well as water and so then everything goes into the big plastic tub so that the paper making process can be continued. And then I added two more jugs full of water. Once the pulp is at a consistency that you are happy with, then add in any more colored paper for your decoration to create it to be a unique pattern. I've chosen to use green and red just so that there is a bit more of that festiveness to it. And then it's ready for the decor and frame. Popping it in, letting it spread evenly into this mold. And this is a third try and so therefore uh, it, it seemed relatively easy at that time. Then it would be ready to be transferred onto a sheet of cloth. This step is relatively easy, especially if your paper is dense or the pulps are packed densely so that it won't actually fall off from the decal itself. That next step is to use a sponge, really absorbent sponge, to absorb the excess water away from this sheet of paper on its back. At the same time, you are pressing the pulp to be tighter even and so that it would stick to this piece of canvas or fabric that uh, you are popping it onto. And here we're getting a quick glance of what this may look like once it's dried up. And then I layer it with another layer of cloth and this particular setup gives me about six sheets. Some of them didn't actually turn out to be a full A4 size, however I was happy to go with whatever I get. This paper making process is quite forgiving until you make it a commercialized thing, it is not going to be too much of a trouble. And once you put the final piece of fabric on top of your paper, then it's ready for some pressing. The commercialized operation would make this step a lot faster, however I had only what I can access to and so I just put so much weight over the paper. You can see that there's the wooden cart, there are chopping boards, there are books and ta-da!
after an overnight press then I have removed all these weights and you can see that this piece of paper has stuck nice and tightly onto the kitchen towel but removing it was relatively easy it's still slightly damp so it needs to be dried further it is such a satisfying experience to see your paper becoming closer and closer to the version of <laughs> a real piece of paper and lifting it off from the cloth where it just does not break is truly truly satisfying there were some variations of the thickness of the paper so when you pop the pop, uh, the frame and decal into the water obviously the more times you do it the thicker the paper becomes so then I laid this piece of cardboard on the floor and just left these pieces of paper to dry, to air dry on the cardboard first. And then the final process is to press this paper inside or under a book again so that it can flatten the dried piece of paper. I do really like this green pieces that seems to just hang out and pop out the little specks. Oh, on a final note, making your own paper is such a unique experience because you are seeing this paper being created from scratch and you get to experiment with the different colors and pieces of paper that you put into your pulp to create that. What I'm mostly impressed about is how forgiving paper making process is even though some of the papers didn't turn out to be the, the perfect A4, there are still ways that I can use them. So it's just all up to your own creativity. The only thing that I would change to this particular batch is that I'd take out the flower petals because it just didn't work with this particular color and the texture that I created in there was too busy. Perhaps chopping them into smaller pieces might just allow it to distribute a little more evenly. The improvement that I would like to make as well is on the actual decal. The frame is very thick and so it takes a lot of effort to scoop water into this particular frame and therefore that is my next thing that I'm going to be doing. I will hope that you enjoyed my paper making process and will be looking into doing something creative in your own backyard too. Bye! Let that good feeling linger longer!